Hello you absolute legends and welcome back to Creating. Today's video is one that I'm personally very 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 excited about. It's one of the most foundational concepts in any sort of computer graphics or computer design. Bezier curves. I mean Bezier curves. No matter who you are, if you've done any sort of graphic designing, be it Illustrator, Photoshop, Blender, After Effects or any of a plethora of other softwares, you've definitely used Bezier curves at some point. I'm working on a really exciting project that requires me to script some Bezier curves in Blender, and while I was at it, I thought this makes a really interesting topic for another video. So by the end of this video, you'd know what Bezier curves are and the math behind it all in a very intuitive and approachable way. At the end of the video, I discuss a few mistakes that I made in my previous video, and with that, let's just get started. Let's take a look at what Bezier curves are. All the software tools that I have ever used have cubic Bezier curves. We'd get to the cubic part in just a minute, but if you cannot wait for the mathematical part, the chapters are clearly marked. You can use the timeline to just skip ahead. Let's just see this example of a Bezier curve. You see here two anchor points and two control points. You can see for yourself that the anchor points are the end points that the curve actually touches at all times, and the control points just decide the shape of the curve. You can play with it for a few minutes and you'd get a feel for it. That's the immense beauty of Bezier curves. It takes something deeply rooted in mathematics and makes it an intuitive tool for an artist. You can actually approximate the same curve with a set of points and joining them with edges. But it just wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be what is called in mathematics a continuous function. In normal people talk, that's what you'd call a perfectly smooth curve. Trying to edit this thing would be a nightmare as well. Now, let's get into the mathematical complexities behind all of this. But before that, if you watch my content regularly, you know I do everything from the graphics to the animations and even the music myself. So, if you like my stuff, throw a like and more importantly a comment for the algorithm and subscribe to not miss out future content. Now, back to more important stuff. Consider this. Two points, P1 and P2. Let's connect them using a straight line and now let's put another point on this line called Q1. Q1 is a combination of P1 and P2. Here is the equation that defines Q1. Now, there is no need to get overwhelmed by it. It's simply a mathematical way of saying that as T increases, Q1 would move closer to P2. And as T decreases, Q1 would get closer to P1. When t is 0 or 1, q1 would be p1 or p2 respectively. Really simple stuff to understand. And also the path that q1 takes between p1 and p2, that is this straight line over here, is what's called a linear or a first order Bezier curve. I know it looks nothing like what you're familiar with yet, but this was all the math that we needed. All the rest is just pure intuition. Let's put another point p3 and another point Q2. Q2 behaves the same way as Q1, just between P2 and P3. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with Q1 and Q2 as well and put a point R1 between them. R1, ding ding ding, you guessed it right, it moves the exact same way between Q1 and Q2. Now let's take a look once again at the path R1 takes between P1 and P2. Let's reset T to 0 and keep our eyes on the red R1 as it moves. You see the path that it takes? If we get rid of every unnecessary thing on the screen, the red path is a quadratic or a second order Bezier curve. P1 and P3 are the anchor points and P2 is a control point. You can see how the curve changes if you move the points. This is starting to look more familiar now, but it's still not the same Bezier curve you are used to. That comes another step down. Let's get to it then. Add another point P4 and Q3 between P3 and P4. Add R2 between Q2 and Q3. Finally, connect R1 and R2 and add a new point called S1. The path S1 takes as T goes from 0 to 1 is called a cubic or a third order Bezier curve. Get rid of all the unnecessary stuff and you are left with something that looks very familiar. 
It's the exact same Bezier curve that all of you are very used to. The same cubic Bezier curve that's available in softwares like Illustrator, Photoshop, After Effects or anything else. A Bezier spline is just a bunch of Bezier curves stuck end to end. In many programs, the control points are aligned with each other. If you move one, the next one moves on its own. That's just to make the spline smooth. And there you have it folks, that's all you need to know about Bezier curves. Now regarding my previous video, it was pointed out to me on Reddit that I made a few blunders in it. The biggest one would be not turning off the minimum layer print time. In my defense, the OP who posted the design didn't fare any better in that regard, but still, I would revisit VAS mode another time and try to do it justice. And with that, we're at the end of yet another video. Keep an eye out for the next one, I promise you, you're going to love it. I create the animations using a tool called Manim. If you'd like to find the code for all the Manim animations in this video, you can find them on my Patreon, although I would eventually post some of it on our subreddit as well. If you liked the video, you know what to do. If you didn't, the other one works fine. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Subscribe. And until next time, just keep building.